The Fallout series has had a number of styles presented to the audience in terms of narrative forms as the series has changed hands of the developers. Among such forms is a difference in choosing an ending. There are pros and cons to each style. Do you prefer canon or open endings? Now, canon endings give official storyline decisions or events to the world of a prior game. If Fallout 5 mentioned that some Vault Dweller blew up Megaton, it would be canon to the series that the Lone Wanderer destroyed the city. This isn't limited to a town's fate, but every choice you make can be canonized in one way or the other. Even something as simple as to whether or not your protagonist spoke to a specific person can be written to canon. The original Fallout game has had many moments canonized in the series. The ghouls of Necropolis died to the mutants, the Vault Dweller bought water from the merchants to help extend the time that Vault 13 can survive, and most importantly, the Vault Dweller saved Tandy, which helped the settlement of Shady Sands flourish into the new California Republic. New Vegas has also canonized some events from Fallout 2, such as Marcus being recruited by the Chosen One, or Drill Sergeant Arch Dornan ranting at them. You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? It's also heavily implied, though not confirmed, that the Chosen One impregnated either Mr. Bishop's wife or daughter. This is more common with the ending slides of 1, 2 in New Vegas, where the game tells you the future of a settlement or person due to your actions, while 3 and 4 try to be as ambiguous as possible. But this isn't just exclusive to the styles of Black Isle or Obsidian. The very existence of Arthur Maxon in Fallout 4 means that the Lone Wanderer did not blow up the Citadel. They also did not kill Owen and Sarah Lyons, who both have died by other means. Canon choices can be particularly helpful in writing worlds. You can pick and choose what you feel would be the most thought-provoking ending. You can employ a lot of the world's prior narratives in very interesting ways. Older settlements can turn into full-on powers, and minor characters can turn into world-defining ones. You don't have to worry about writing yourself into a corner, so it can make a world feel like it grows a bit more naturally. That's not to say that a world that avoids canonizing specific choices are inherently going to feel unnatural or uninteresting, but canon choices don't have the same concerns as open choices. It does have the issue of making your specific protagonist not feel too important. Did you shoot up Sadie Sands and melted Aradash and Tandy with a P-94? If your vault dweller was canon, the NCR would never have formed. It can be viewed as not respecting player choice at all. And for a lot, being told that your choices do not matter is actually rather insulting. And that's where open endings have an advantage. While canon choices will pick and choose what actions a protagonist took in a prior game to build a new world from, open endings will instead go out of the way to never mention these choices. It may have a game take place so far from an old game, either by time or by location, that it doesn't matter. Did the Soul Survivor help the Brotherhood? Did the Courier help Mr. House? With an open ending, you'll never know. Open endings will be vague with such information, if it's mentioned at all. They may even try to canonize each choice by having everything happen regardless. Under this method, something, but not necessarily the Soul Survivor, may destroy the Institute, Railroad, Minuteman, and Commonwealth Brotherhood at some point, turning everything the Soul Survivor did pointless and they'll try to make specific characters who could die in the last prior game die regardless. The Brotherhood in Fallout 5 may mention that Arthur Maxon died in battle, but the details are iffy. A scribe may say something along the lines of, some say he died to a vault dweller, some say he died fighting super mutants. No one's quite sure, but he was a great elder all the same. This is a method that tries to respect each and every choice by ultimately rendering them all meaningless, by either ignoring each one or by making each one valid in some form. There's issues that may come up from having to tiptoe around them so much. A writer may feel forced to invalidate any faction's progress or make them all grow. Perhaps they feel that keeping the status quo may be the best way to go about things. But that's also hard to do under such narratives like New Vegas or Fallout 4 where you can choose a faction. But there are ways you can make everything happen without saying what the protagonist really chose. That said, you may have to ignore specifics like what happened to a companion or a settlement, validating everything by making everything invalid. It's not impossible to write a compelling narrative that ignores prior games or is as ambiguous as possible, but you cannot use a lot of history. Mentioning the fate of Megaton or the Strip goes against the spirit of an open ending. Still, it can make some things feel more artificial. Obviously, the million dollar question is which is better? Some may feel that canonizing events make a world unfold more naturally, while others demand that a new game doesn't invalidate some other choices. Ideally, a save system where you can import old decisions into a new game would be wonderful. Mass Effect does this, but that would be a really large amount of work. 
Fallout has decisions that can have giant ramifications on a location. Factions were born from the actions of prior protagonists. This is pretty different from Mass Effect, which is an ultimately linear experience with some branches in a story. Fallout has more canonized choices than truly open, at least with many of the big choices. But most of these choices are from Fallout 1 and 2, which were more like 3 in the sense that the narrative was pretty straightforward. You didn't choose a faction, just beat a destined antagonist but what will be canonized from New Vegas in Fallout 4 where you do choose a main faction. It's hard to say. Bethesda typically desires to respect player choice, but as stated, the series has more canon than not. Of course, ultimately, as a consumer, this all comes down to personal preference. Do you feel respecting everyone's choice by ignoring all forms of choice is better, or do you think a narrative benefits more when a writer doesn't have the imposed mandate that they cannot canonize prior events?